Now we are going to look at DNA replications that occurs in bacterial cells and also DNA replication that occurs in eukaryotic cells. Basically, uh, an example of uh, a bacterial cell is E. coli. So E. coli chromosomes and many other bacterial chromosomes, they are circular, okay, and has a single origin of replication. It only has one origin of replication. Origin of replication is basically a short stretch of DNA that has a specific sequence of nucleotides. Okay, so when DNA replication occurs, uh, an enzyme okay, will attach to this uh, origin of replication and opens up the parental uh, DNA strand okay, and becomes the template to synthesize the new daughter DNA uh, strands. So, as uh, replication occurs, uh, replication occurs in both directions. So, it occurs bidirectional. Okay, in both opposite direction. So, uh, as the replication proceeds, okay, so at the end of the process, it will form two daughter DNA molecules. For eukaryotic cells, because eukaryotic cells is much more complex compared to prokaryotic cells, uh, this is due to the amount of uh, DNA in the eukaryotic cells is much larger compared to prokaryotic cells. Eukaryotic chromosome will have hundreds to a few thousands uh, origin of replication. So basically, it is the same. The DNA replication uh, in eukaryote also occurs at the origin of replication. During DNA uh, replication, enzymes okay, will recognize DNA sequence at the origin of replication and this enzyme will separate the two strands, the two parental strands and uh, opens up a replication bubble. The parental uh, the strands will basically become the template to synthesize the new daughter DNA. So from the origin of replication, replication of DNA proceeds in both directions. Okay, so for each replication bubble, uh, the replication occurs in both directions. So the purpose of having many uh, replication bubble is to speed up the rate of uh, DNA replication until two daughter DNA molecules are formed at the end of the process. Shown in the diagram here is a parental DNA strand that is going to start the process of DNA replication. So basically, during uh, DNA replication, uh, the enzyme uh, helicase will start to unwind the parental DNA strands and separate both of the parental DNA strands. So this will form the replication bubble. So this is actually half of the replication bubble. So at the end, uh, at each end of the replication bubble here, so there is a replication fork, which is a Y-shaped region where the parental DNA strands of DNA uh, starts to unwound. So this is the replication fork. It is also important for you to identify the two ends of the two parental uh, DNA strand. So the top strand here is uh, it starts with five prime ends and here is the three prime end at the origin of replication basically here so uh, the bottom strand here because the top strand uh, it starts with five prime so the bottom strand is three prime and uh, here is the five prime end so the directionality of the top strand is from here to here from five to three and for the bottom strand is also 5 to 3. So they are in opposite direction. So it is also important for you to identify the two ends of the uh, of the DNA parental strand because then you will know uh, the, the direction of the synthesis for the new DNA strand. This is because the synthesis of the new DNA strands will occur at the 5 to 3 prime directions. Okay. So this is basically the synthesis of the leading strand. It occurs from 5 to 3 prime direction towards the replication fork. Now, let's look at the proteins that involve in the process of DNA replication. The first protein that involves in the process is the enzyme helicase. 
The function of this enzyme is to basically to separate the two parental DNA strands so that it becomes the template to synthesize the new DNA uh, daughter strands. Uh, the enzyme will unwind the double helix at the replication fork. Uh, this is done by disrupting the hydrogen bonds that holds the two parental strands together. The next protein is single strand binding proteins or known as SSB. So the function of this protein is to basically to bind to the single strand DNA which is the parental strand that has been separated. And then the, uh, the purpose of this is to stabilize and prevent the parental strand from reforming the double helix and allows the parental strand to be used as template to synthesize the new daughter strands. The next enzyme is topoisomerase. The function of this enzyme is to prevent excessive coiling by relieving overwinding strain ahead of the replication fork by breaking, swiveling, and rejoining DNA strands. Basically, for DNA replication, it involves two types of uh, strands, which is the synthesis of leading strand and also the synthesis of Okazaki fragments that leads to the formation of lagging strands. Before these two strands are synthesized, uh, the process has, uh, has to start with the synthesis of RNA primer using uh, primase. So this enzyme basically will add RNA nucleotides one at a time according to the template of, uh, of the DNA uh, and the process starts for example at the top strand here it will start at the origin of replication so the synthesis of RNA primer will start from 5 prime okay to 3 prime the length of the RNA primer is about 5 to 10 nucleotides long Basically, for the process of DNA replication, it has to start with the synthesis of RNA primer first. So this is done by the uh, by the RNA primase. So the purpose of uh, synthesizing RNA primer is to make available a three prime end. So remember that the synthesis of RNA primer starts with a five prime and ends with a three prime. So once a 3 prime end is available, the next enzyme will come, which is DNA polymerase 3. Basically, DNA polymerase 3 will use parental DNA as template to synthesize new DNA strand by covalently adding DNA nucle uh, nucleotides in the 3 prime end of RNA primer here or to the pre-existing or elongating DNA strand here. So this is to start basically the synthesis of the leading strand. DNA polymerase 3 will also do the same when uh, it is going to initiate the synthesis of Okazaki fragments. So remember, to synthesize new DNA strands, the DNA nucleotides are always added at the 3' end by the enzyme DNA polymerase 3. The next enzyme is DNA polymerase 1. The function of this enzyme is to remove RNA nucleotides of primers okay, in the 5 to 3 prime direction and replaces them with DNA nucleotides. In the DNA molecule, it cannot have any RNA nucleotides and any RNA nucleotides in the, uh, in the primer must be replaced with DNA nucleotides. DNA ligase is the enzyme that joins fragments of DNA into one continuous DNA. For example, the, the enzyme DNA ligase will join the three prime ends of DNA that replaces the primers to the rest of the leading strand. The enzyme DNA ligase also joins Okazaki fragments to one another to form lagging strand. To synthesize a new DNA strands, the process requires number one, DNA polymerases. However, this enzyme cannot initiate the synthesis of a polynucleotide. DNA polymerases catalyzes the synthesis of, the, uh, of new DNA by adding nucleotides to the existing 3' end of a primer 
or the 3 prime n of growing DNA strand and never to the 5 prime n. Thus, a new DNA strand elongates only in the 5 to 3 prime direction. For example, this is a new DNA strand. This is uh, the 5 prime n. This is the 3 prime n. The enzyme DNA polymerases only adds new nucleotides at the 3 prime n of the strand. Second, to synthesize a new DNA strand, the process also requires nucleoside triphosphate, DNTPs. DNTPs are the building blocks for DNA replication. The, comp the component of the NTPs consists of a deoxyribose sugar, a base, and three phosphate groups. These are the types of the NTPs. You will have DATP, DGTP, DCTP, and also DDTP. <coughs> the process of DNA polymerization includes the following steps. Number one, as each DNTP are added to the growing DNA strand. So the blue strand here is the new DNA strand, the growing DNA strand. Each of the DNTP will lose two phosphate groups. Okay, so it loses two phosphate group as a molecule of pyrophosphate. Next, the pyro the pyrophosphate molecule will undergo hydrolysis to produce two molecule of inorganic uh, phosphate. The hydrolysis of pyrophosphate releases energy and this energy is used for the polymerization reaction. The synthesis of new DNA molecules during DNA replication involves the synthesis of leading strands and also the synthesis of lagging strands. For the synthesis of the leading strand, it occurs from the origin of replications towards the replication fox. The synthesis occurs in the 5 to 3 prime direction. As you can see in this diagram, in the uh, replication bubbles, there are two leading strands that are being synthesized. For the synthesis of the lagging strands, it occurs from the replication fox towards the origin of replication. For the synthesis of the lagging strand, uh, they are synthesized first as Okazaki fragments. These Okazaki fragments as, are also synthesized in the 5 to 3 prime direction. Overall, the synthesis of both strands occurs in both directions. These are the steps for the synthesis of the leading strands. First, Along one template strand, starting at the origin of a replication that has a 3 prime N, the enzyme primase synthesizes a short RNA primer. Next, this will enable DNA polymerase 3 to synthesize a complementary strand continuously by elongating the new DNA strands in the 5 to 3 prime direction towards the replication fork. Only one primer is required for the DNA polymerase tree to synthesize the leading strand. Then, DNA polymerase 1 replaces RNA primer with DNA nucleotides. Next is the synthesis of the lagging strand. Lagging strand is synthesized discontinuously as Okazaki fragments and these Okazaki fragments, as you can see from the diagram, it is synthesized away from the replication fork. To synthesize each of these Okazaki fragments, it requires the enzyme primase. The enzyme primase will join RNA nucleotides to form a primer. Once RNA primer are synthesized, next DNA polymerase 3 will add DNA nucleotides to the primer. Adding DNA nucleotide to the primer will form Okazaki fragment 1. The synthesis of this uh, Okazaki fragment is in the direction 5 to 3 prime. Once the enzyme DNA polymerase 3 meets the RNA primer to the right, which is here is the RNA of the leading strand, the DNA polymerase tree will detach. 
After the first Okazaki fragment has been synthesized, the synthesis of the Okazaki fragment 2 will be synthesized involving the synthesis of the RNA primer first. After the primer has been synthesized, then only DNA polymerase 3 can add DNA nucleotides to the 3' end of the RNA primer. The DNA polymerase 3 will keep on adding DNA nucleotides until it reaches the primer of the first Okazaki fragment. At this point, the enzyme DNA polymerase 3 will detach from the DNA strand. DNA polymerase 1 then degrades the RNA primer by replacing RNA nucleotides with DNA nucleotides. Next, DNA ligase will join the Okazaki fragments to form the lagging strand into continuous DNA strand. Now, let's summarize the process of DNA replication by looking at the role of every uh, enzymes and protein that involved in the process. Firstly, the enzyme helicase will unwind the parental double helix by breaking the hydrogen bonds holding the two parental strands together. Second, single-strand binding proteins stabilizes the unwound parental DNA and preventing the parental DNA from reforming the double helix. Number three, the leading strand is synthesized continuously in the 5 to 3 prime direction, starting from the origin of replication towards, towards the replication fork. The elongation of the leading strand is done by DNA polymerase 3, where the enzyme will add DNA nucleotides at the 3 prime end of the elongating leading strand. Next, the lagging strand is synthesized discontinuously also in the uh, three, 5 to 3 prime direction. The synthesis of the lagging strand involves the synthesis of Okazaki fragments. As you can see from the box here, so this is the synthesis of Okazaki fragment number 1 for example that starts near the origin of replication. And then as the replication fork progresses, it's, uh, it starts to synthesize the next Okazaki fragment. So Okazaki fragment number 2, Okazaki fragment number 3. Same goes to this one. This is Okazaki fragment number 1, Okazaki fragment number 2, Okazaki fragment number 3 and so forth. Next, for every Okazaki fragment synthesized, it is uh, synthesized first uh, by the synthesis of RNA primer using primase. After RNA primer has been synthesized, it is then extended using DNA polymerase 3. Next, DNA polymerase 1 will replace the RNA nucleotides with DNA nucleotides. After that, the enzyme DNA ligase will join Okazaki fragments into continuous lagging strand.